We are the people in power. Racism is about oppression. Sorry, white people have not been oppressed. You have some funny ideas about what constitutes racism. Let's say I go to Ghana. I go to the Ghanaian parliament where it's all black people, it's all Ghanaians in power. They're all privileged, they're in charge, they're the predominant culture. I walk in there and say, you fucking bunch of niggas, you're all black bastards. If I do that, it doesn't count as racist because I'm not oppressed in that situation. Are you fucking kidding me? I couldn't bleat, oh, it's not racism, on the technicality. You are talking absolute shit. Holy shit, Buzzfeed Yellow, you do not know when to stop, do you? 33 questions white people have for white people. Here we go. Why do you assume only other races like fried chicken? It's not an assumption, it's a fact. It's a resource war. It doesn't matter the colour, the race, the nationality. Any other bastard thinks they're gonna have more of that chickeny good stuff than me before it runs out. They're wrong. I'm having it. Fuck you. Blacks, whites, Chinese, the French, fuck everyone. I'm, I'm having the chicken. Why do we make it so we only have pumpkin in the fall? I know this guy has quite a big following, but he looks like he crawled out of a C-3PO costume at a Star Wars convention. I want pumpkin all the time. Buy it frozen then, you piss flap. Why can't most white people dance? Most people can't dance. It only looks good when you are 18 or thereabouts and you know what you're doing. Even if you are the sexiest bastard in the world, or bitch in the world, and you know what you're doing and you're a great dancer, you do it at your daughter's wedding 20 years later and you'll look like an asshole. Nobody can dance, and it's just the way it is. Seriously, like, is it genetic or something? Do we have, like, stiff hips or, like, two left feet? No, you're a mal-coordinated asshole, and you've developed a shitty dance 20 years before you should have. Why do you get so annoyed when other people don't speak English? English is hard. We have silent K. Fuck me, Kermit. Are you answering the questions for me now? I don't give a fuck what language people speak, as long as they speak English when they're talking to me, because that makes fucking sense, doesn't it? How do we get so excited to brag on Instagram? I have never bragged on Instagram. In fact, I barely know what Instagram is. Fuck Instagram. Get on with the question. Um, that we went to this really cool, authentic cultural festival, even though we went with all of our white friends. Why do you think somebody organized the really cool, authentic cultural festival? Because it would get more people interested in the really cool, authentic cultural stuff than are actually able to travel to the country and fucking immerse in it for real. So obviously you went there with your white friends. That's the whole fucking point. Why do white people spray tan until they turn orange? Nah, that's just for celebrities, bodybuilders and receptionists. Can't you just be comfortable in your own body? I'm just saying. There is no I'm just saying. It doesn't make what you said before inoffensive. It was fully fucking motivated speech saying something fucking horrible that you wanted to say in the full knowledge of the impact that it would have. You wanted to be an arsehole and then saying I'm just saying afterwards doesn't mean you weren't an arsehole. There is no such thing as I'm just saying following your offensive shite. You know what? I can tell what an ignorant bitch you are after using that cliche in such a stupid way and then beaming into camera as if you'd said something arsehole-ish and got off scot-free not being seen as an arsehole. Yes, you are a fucking stupid bitch. I'm just saying. Why do you think that since you've seen five seasons of The Wire, you're a cultural expert? What the fuck is a cultural expert? We are all cultural expert by virtue of being in the culture and fully fucking aware of how it works that we were born into and live into. Or if we move, we might have cultural expertise in two cultures. Or you might have an expertise if you know something about a culture that nobody else does or very few other people do, like ancient Egyptian culture. If you can read hieroglyphs, that probably qualifies as cultural expertise. Otherwise, no, even if you go to other countries and immerse yourself in the culture for a couple of weeks or a couple of months, you're not a fucking expert, are you? You will never be a fucking cultural expert. And even if you were, it would only be in a very small handful of places. They're not a fucking cultural expert. Those people who brag about their knowledge of foreign countries and they are assholes like you.
Why do you believe everything you see on TV when it comes to other races? This is not a question for a white person, this is a question for an absolute fucking moron. How would you, how would you even believe it? If you've watched telly, and there's some Indian guy, and he's really funny, and he's hapless, and he's clueless, and he's doing all this, you wouldn't then open the fucking door to your Indian landlord and expect him to behave the same way, would you? No, you'd go fucking run and get your money and pay your rent. Of course, telly gives shitty, sometimes cliche, sometimes inappropriate views of other cultures. No, you would have to be a fucking idiot to believe anything on TV. Why do we get upset when a TV show becomes diverse, even though diverse usually just means two to three people of color? That's not a question for white people either. That's a question for racists. Why do you get upset when there's some racial diversity on a TV program? No, it never fucking happens. You should do 33 questions that white people have for the Ku Klux Klan. Ku Klux Klan, Ku, Ku, Ku Klux Klan. Fuck. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. 33 questions white people have for openly racist figures. That's what you should do. That would make more sense. Why do you assume movies with white stars are automatically more relatable than movies with people of color? Oh, look who's sitting all professor type pose, psychologist type blah. You know what? I'm going to show you up for the ignorant twat you are. It's to do with grouping behaviour. And this is anecdotally and academically documented. Let me give you a really good example. On the set of Star Trek, there would have a certain amount of extras with Ferengi makeup and a certain amount of extras with Bajoran makeup. And they would sit for their meals, they would sit together, each in their own group. So you'd have a table of Bajorans and a table of Ferengi. It was fairly standard for these guys to play the roles they were playing. But on one particular occasion, they had a, a reason to make two extra Bajorans out of the Ferengi. And these two guys, these two extras, switched, as it were. Now, for the first couple of days after that, they still sat with their counter with the people they were sat with before. But towards the end of the week, they switched over, and you again had the same situation where all the Ferengi sat with the Ferengi, all the Bajorans sat with the Bajorans. And there was no scheduling reason for that. All took lunch at the same time. There was no scheduling reason for it. They were all in the same scenes. They are all mixed in on the, on the set of DS9. It's grouping behaviour. We do it subconsciously. We do it automatically. Yes. If you're trying to say that a white lead role is equally relatable to black and white kids, if you're trying to say a black lead role is equally relatable to black and white kids, you are taking three million years of evolution, throwing it over your shoulder and saying this doesn't happen. Don't be fucking stupid. People of color have had to relate to white characters for all of cinematic history. Yes, because white culture places like the UK and America enjoy making shit up and then paying people to pretend it's happening, paying other people to record it, and then paying distributors <laughs> to put it in our faces. And they try and make it really cool, and we actually enjoy watching this made-up, sometimes impossible, and dumb shit. And honestly, I don't think the other cultures need to worry too much about that. Aren't we complaining that the Oscars and other award shows are like all white? You're making two hardcore mistakes here. One of them is assuming that this white culture award is worth more than awards given out in other countries. I'm sure there are plenty of Black Actress Awards awarded in Africa. <laughs> are you fucking talking like that means nothing? No, the only ones that count are the white people's awards. No, the underlying assumption of that is completely whack. The other thing is, there's been a progress, like I say about Jack Johnson, heavyweight champion in 1908. Well, why did that take so long? Because of fucking slavery. Because of slavery, because black people were enslaved, became free, were second class citizens, but it overcame that. And then we're coming right up to the 1950s, who's still fighting about stuff like that with Martin Luther King, etc, etc, etc. There's a progression, an integration of the two races over time, uh, to come to, to come to terms with each other, to be more equal. And that's why you have the slow, what you would call a seepage, I suppose, of black people appearing in these traditionally white institutions, like the heavyweight championship of the world, like Emmys, Oscars, blah, blah, blah. Now, 
what is interesting there is an award which most of you will know about called the music of black origin award the mobo awards music can you imagine if there was a Music of White Origins Award? We have part of the stabilisation of these two cultures to be at peace with each other is this strange situation where the predominantly white culture wouldn't dare to have a Music of White Origin Award because it would be immediately blasted as racist and everybody would boycott it. But we can have a music of black origins. Well, now, why is that fair? And you go, well, it's not, really. This shouldn't be allowed, so to speak. But uh, as a way of authenticating, as a way of mainstreaming this idea of, of black awards, black awards, where if you go back 100 years, there's no fucking thing at all. That's part of the acceptance. The question is dumb. I mean, it leads to a multi-dimensional response, but the question sits on the foundation of two really bad fallacies, one of which is quite racist within itself. It's a crap question. They're all crap questions, I know. It's comedy, you're being silly, but you're also being quite racist. Taking these cliché, stupid ideas about certain cultures and then getting other cultures you set up your videos as if other cultures are asking those questions you're creating friction you're doing it to garner views and you're garnering views to make money that's why you can afford stuff this is like white people congratulating other white people on being white everybody should be represented yes that may be an issue in some places but you know what buzzfeed yellow gonna do nothing whatsoever about that mention it as if on the moral high ground and yet encourage people to get involved in race wars brilliant uh, I, I, like I'm gonna fall for that I don't know the difference between appropriation and appreciation what are we gonna have next 33 questions for people who don't have dictionaries can we figure out how to make our own pop culture our own slang our own cool clothes instead of stealing other people's cool clothes and then saying that they are our cool clothes you've just said we award ourselves for our own pop culture stuff and now we're stealing everyone else okay right no fuck let's just answer this question you know what? It's situations like this, when there's a white person sitting at home looking at another white person in his crappy grey white dog t-shirt and his gimboid face and they're thinking, holy fuck, my culture is whack. I need to go and look what the black guys are wearing, stats, and I want to fucking wear it because I'm shit. <laughs> <laughs> there's no there's no downward direction from this. What's the guy in the Chinese restaurant wearing? I'll fucking wear that. What are the people in the kitchen with? Is a white smock top and some blue and white check trousers. Brilliant, I'll have it. It's better than what my white role models on BuzzFeed Yellow are wearing. They look like fucking mongs. Why are white people obsessed with Wes Anderson? Who? Okay, 33 questions that deeply ethnocentric American white people have for other white people. Why would you ever say thug life? It's a bad life. I love pausing this guy. He totally debunks himself. What was the question? Thug life? Why would you say thug life? I've never said thug life. But it's not as if we mean thug as in fucking gangster life, is it? We mean thug life when you put somebody down. Hence the fucking David Cameron thug life Houses of Parliament videos. It's not meant to glorify gun-toting twats. What do you have against seasoning and spiciness? Didn't Christopher Columbus discover America looking for spices? Yes, we do spice our food. It's as simple as that. Their casseroles are thick. Why do you try to avoid confrontation at all costs? There are so many fallacies underlying this question. It is almost too much to go into. If you say, at all costs, you mean at all costs, no matter what. Obviously, confrontation would be within an at all costs amount of cost. So confrontation would be part of the solution. If you did anything at all costs, you can't. Oh, ooh, that one really bugged me. Okay, why do you avoid confrontation? Well, because it leads to fucking fighting and wars and it's endless and then it goes one up. Then you cause resentment because you've done something really fucking horrible because you were raising the stakes. And then because you've caused resentment, it goes to generations and you're at fucking war. That's why we avoid confrontation. An Englishman basically 
won't draw his guns unless he's going to use them and I quite like that idea so you will take a certain amount of pushing before you go nuclear on the other cunt it's a mixture you've got a gradation of states you've got your everyday state banter doesn't count as confrontation your friendly stuff you've got your polite state where you opt for the politer society version of the of of the current situation if there's going to be some conflict you will find the peaceful resolution then there's getting irritated and giving someone a warning and then there's going off on them you don't need anything else you don't need to be getting in each other's face over every pissing little thing that's what an evolved culture shows you that's what japanese japanese have probably got the greatest cultural history that's what they show you with their two forms of behavior the formal and the informal that's what british society shows you with the polite and the and the and the impolite the polite and the casual a confrontational culture will be violent and fucking disappear up its own arsehole and most of the well developed countries in the world are aware of this that's why we're non-confrontational but we will confront you when you say something as fucking stupid as you just did why is it crazy that i'm white and i have a big butt yeah that is crazy that's fucking unbelievable. You know, I think I'll stop looking into the winking in and out of existence of charged particles because that has nothing on the fact that you're a white girl with a big butt. That is truly mind-blowing. Why do you make such a big deal when somebody doesn't want to hike? Fuck's he talking about? Why do you keep talking about reverse racism? That is not a thing. The phrase reverse racism doesn't make any sense. You're right. But what we've labelled or what some people have inadvertently labelled as reverse racism is actually blatant racism and it does fucking exist. Why are you too afraid to speak up when someone says something racist? You know what, I've been in this situation and it's true, we don't speak up. But I'll tell you why. Because a white person who is not racist will tend to have no racist friends whatsoever. The actual situations where somebody comes out openly racist full on with the shit is usually the sort of situation where you stand to lose a customer or lose an account or lose your job there's usually some sort of risk involved because otherwise you wouldn't you wouldn't be interfacing with this person there's a sort of a business need for these for this interpersonal situation that's usually when it crops up and it is you don't say it for the same reason that you don't shit on your boss's desk. You sort of tolerate it because the choice is, do I risk custom account, job, whatever it is, do I risk this thing in order to tell this obviously lifelong racist that he's a racist and that's bad? Or do I just fucking let it lie? Let it lie. Let it lie. You know, black people are going to go, oh, you fucking cunt. You should have taken the risk. You should have tried to make society a better place. I can take that on board, but these situations always catch you by surprise, and there's always more risk than you fancy putting on the table at the time, and you get sort of excuses, you make excuses, well you know it's a generational thing, our grand, most of our grandparents are racist, our great grandparents probably 100% were racist, and you know that they never actually changed that, you know, that they, they may have adopted the language, they may have shifted a little bit, but they remain to the end of their days racist. You know, you didn't turn up to their funerals and go, well, the cunt was racist, so we're glad they're dead. No, you knew she was a lovely old woman, she helped everyone, she brought up her kids nicely, blah, 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 blah. You go on like that. Generational change, minor pockets, it all whizzes around your head and you take the path of least resistance and you make your sale or you make your quota or, or, you, or you, you don't tell your boss he's an arsehole or, you know, whoever it is you sort of end up not doing it. It's a good question, that. The rest of them we shit, but that's a good question because that does happen, and it's interesting. Why do we think that having one friend of colour means that nothing we say or do could possibly ever be racist? No, having one friend of colour, as you put it, having one black friend, let's say, shows that there's no issue with colour. There is no clearer way of putting it. It's very similar to if you get, say, a white guy marries a black woman and then gets into a, an argument with someone on the street, say it's an Indian guy, and he goes, oh, you fucking packy, and he goes, oh, well, that was racist. He was being racist, and I'm like, well, 
No, he's not racist because he married a black woman. He wanted to wind up the guy in the street or the guy in the pub, whatever. He was just insulting him with the first thing that came to mind. He was like, yes, it was racist behaviour. In that way, a non-racist can do racist behaviour. But they're still a non-racist. It doesn't mean they're a fucking, you know, a racist in their heart and secretly hate their friend or tolerate their colour. It's not like that. Why does being half white automatically make my commentary on white culture only half true? I am just as much white as I am Mexican. Mexicans are white as well, you stupid Dago. How do you believe that black lives matter means that your life doesn't matter? Every life matters. It's just that one has a harder time living. That's not even the fucking reason for the Black Lives Matter slogan. There was too much ignorance in that. Um, just, no, no, fuck me. It was too stu- no, that, that one's too stupid to answer. Why do you get offended when you see a table full of black people, but not when you see a lunch room full of white people? That's another question for the KKK. You need, the, the, you need a separate list. Questions white people have for overtly racist organizations or overtly racist motherfuckers. Why do you get offended when you see a table full of black people? You would have to be racist, heart and soul, to see a table full of black people and have an immediate Ooh, that's so offensive response. You'd have to be a cartoon character. You had to be an arsehole or a cartoon character. Why do you always ask to have a white people club? You already do. It's the student union. It's primarily white. They have a black student union because you don't represent them well. Well, thank you for explaining that. But the point is, the student union may be predominantly white, but it's not exclusively white. I get it. It's not an even playing field. If there's five black people in your student union and 300 white people, you know, the white people's issues are going to be the ones that get addressed. You'd be outvoted, basically, on everything. But to a very large degree, students' issues are students' issues, whether you're white or black. So the, the black interests are being served by the student body for the reason the student body was created. There's very little real benefit in splintering off and making a new racist bracket, a new racism tier. If the minority have a valid enough point, it will get served. You know, if I turn up, if you turn up to the student union and say, well, my fucking maths lecturer chained me to the desk and took a cane to me, that's an issue. It's a big issue. Even though there are 399 other people in your student union that that did not happen to, it will become a cause taken up because of the injustice, because of the level of the injustice. To say that 395 white people will disregard genuine concerns of the five black people is to be racist. You're not talking about integration and you're not talking about equality. You're, you're talking about you kind of saying, you know, the, the rules of this society don't work for us, therefore we'll create our own. It's always creating division. And you should really ask yourself at some point, is the benefit you're getting out of these division groups worth the cost of the division they create? Why do you see the success of people of colour as a threat to you? Did they give this guy all of the velvety voice, psycho babble bullshit questions? Because it's all completely see-through. That was another question designed for racists. You know that a two minute video about whiteness isn't reverse racism, right? Two minutes about whiteness, hundreds of years of systemic oppression, yeah, I think we can deal with this. Slavery ended 400 years ago. Why are we upset about immigrants when we were the first immigrants? And we were white people running away from other white people. That kind of shows you how bad white people can be. This shows me how bad BuzzFeed can be. So put that on YouTube and then try and pass it off as non-racist is unfucking believable Yes, you're racist. You're racist about everyone. You're racist about everyone and try to pass it off as fun or debate mongering when it's only for views. It's like the worst reason for being racist. The worst excuse to try and get out of the fact you are being racist and the worst presentation of shit questions from one race to another over and over again while inherently insulting the questionee. BuzzFeed Yellow, you are taking the piss.